Um, hi, we're back with uh, another joint distribution problem. This also is from quiz six, problem three. Uh, I skipped two. Um, but three, I like also a different area of uh, interest, a different area, a region of interest to draw. Um, this guy, again, is a valid density function. I, did, I didn't um, put a story with this guy, so this is just bare bones. There's my joint distribution, 1 18th. I know it's a continuous distribution because x and y are defined over intervals, not at nice uh, discrete points or uh, a nice 1, 2, 3, 4. So I know this is a region. Um, again, the first time any, if I ask anything about it, I wouldn't even... Um, I wouldn't even look at the questions first. The first thing I would do is set up that area of interest so you know when you start integrating or finding probabilities the region you're talking about. So yeah, this is, this is my uh, region of interest. And so it looks like this. Everything's going to be based on this picture. Um, X's go from 0 to 3. So here's my X's and here's my Y's. And so let's see. Um, 0, 1, 2, 3. This isn't going to be drawn to scale. Let's just say this is 9 here. So um, uh, y, well, first of all, x is going from 0 to 3. So I know I'm in this box. And y's go from um, 0 to 9, because that y's are bigger than x. So I know, I know I'm sitting here, if you want to just think right now, I'm sitting here somewhere in this box. But this is going to define my region more clearly. Y should be bigger than uh, x squared, but less than 9. So just the graph of y equals x squared, you know you're going to get this, this parabola. And I want y's above x squared and less than 9. So let's get rid of that. This is my region of interest right here. And again, if you want to be better, I should have dotted lines there, but I'm continuous, so I'm not, I'm not too worried. But here's my region of interest. And so if I, was, if I were to integrate this function over this region, you're going to get 1 because it has to be a valid um, density function. So that's my joint, and I want to find expected value of x, expected value of y. Um, in order to find expected value of x, I need the marginal for x. So to do a and b, I'm going to need marginals. So um, this is kind of good because we haven't set up a marginal for y yet. And uh, so anyway, you'll get to look at both, both situations. So to do a, I need f of x. I need the marginal for x. So we want to get f of x of x. I want the marginal for x. So to find the marginal for x, I have to integrate over my y's. So right here, and the thing I'm integrating is my joint. So I'm integrating the joint over my y's. And so y's are going to go from something to something. OK. So if I go over here, my x's are ranging from 0 to 3. If I choose any y in that interval, y goes from here to here. Right? Choose any y in here. Here's another y. Um, from here to here. So over 0 to 3, y's are going from x squared to 9. So those are my bounds. Uh, and to me, that's the hardest part of the problem. I mean, even if you use maple or whatever to integrate, and these are, these are nice, you know, this is a polynomial function. Um, again, the hardest part is going to be setting this up. And maybe even on test three, I just asked you to set up the limits of integration for this. Because I know you can do integration once you get to this part. So anyway, let's finish this guy. This is 1 18th. Oops, that's not even a lie. 1 18th y for y's from x squared, y equals 9. So this is going to be um, 9 eighteenths minus x squared over 18. OK, so let's just, so right, this should be 1 half minus x squared over 18. And the only thing left then is to talk about its support. So there is f of x. Support, so where do x's range from? So for these y's, my x's always range from 0 to 3. I better not have a y in this expression, because this is just f of x, totally a function in terms of x. So this is going to be defined for x's between 0 and 3. You can check me um, if I integrate this function over this region, it has to integrate to 1. Um, now that I have f of x, I can find its expected value. So expected value of x is just integrating over my x's, f of x of x 
times x dx. I mean, you already know the, the um, definition of expected value, so I'm just writing what it is. And x's are defined from x equals 0 to x equals 3. I put in my f of x of x times x, and I actually get an expression. Let me see. I did it already before I came here, and I got a 9 eighths. Just saving us a little time with the, with the actual computation. So that's what I got there. And um, let's go ahead and find, to find the uh, expected value of y, I need the marginal of y. So I think that's a good exercise too. Um, f of y of y. I'm going to be integrating my joint over my x's. So this is going to go from x equals something to x equals something. Um, over my y's, I mean over my x's, dx, of my joint, 1 18th. Problem here is what are my bounds? So if I go over here, I choose any, here's my y's are going from 0 to 9. Can you kind of see where my x's are going? My x's, choose any x in here, it's going to go from here to there, from here to there. So my x's are going from 0 to the square root of y. X's are going from 0 to the square root of y. So this is going to be 1 18th x. Um, x equals square root of y. x equals 0. So this is going to be 1 18th. Hope you can see that. Square root of y. Last thing is support. So my y is in general, right? I just need in general. My y's are going from 0 to 9. So my support here is 0 to 9. Um, if you want to double check, let's make that look better like an 18. If you want to check, you can integrate that guy over 0 to 9. You better get 1. It's always a nice check. If not, then you did something wrong in the problem. Um, expected value of y, then, should just be f of y of y times y dy, and my y's go from 0 to 9. And again, I did this before I came. And let me see, what did I get for expected value of y? I got 27 fifths. OK. And the reason I put the other two on here, because I think they're, they're very nice. I know I'm kind of running out of space. But I think C, uh, we can do this a couple ways. Expected value of x plus y. We had properties of expected values back, oh, I don't know what chapter they were in. But we could do this very nicely. Uh, expected value of x plus y, you could just say that's expected value of x plus expected value of y. That's legal for any random variables. And you already have this from part A and that from part B, so you're good to go. Or you could use the um, law of unconscious statistician. Um, this is also equal to, you would do a double integral over that region of f of x, y times x plus y, however you're going to do it, dy, dx, however you set up your limits of integration. So now I'm just taking the joint times x plus y, and by definition, this is another way to find it, um, either one you prefer. So there are two right there. This is probably the easiest. You already did A and you already did B, so C would follow. Um, and the reason I put D on there is just, you, can, you have to be careful with D. Um, a lot of people believe, even though we've never said this, um, I'm going to go ahead and erase this picture right here. The problem with D, a lot of people want to say this, but it's not true. It looks, it looks like it should be true, right? Or you want it to be true. Expected value of x plus y is not expected value of x times expected value y. That life would be too good. Um, this would be true if x and y are independent. But if you don't have independence, and I can tell you from this problem, I know I don't have independence. Do you know why I know this? This is a good problem. If I have independence, remember, if, if x and y are independent, then f of x, y should be equal to the product of the marginals. And here was the marginal for x. And here was the marginal for y. 
and there's no way the product of those two is 1 18th. So I know I don't have independence and I know this is not true for this given x and y. So again, I'm using law of unconscious statistician. This is just going to be the double integral over the right region of f of x, y times x, y. And I don't know if you're going to do dy, dx or the other which way, but by law of unconscious, I'm just sticking in expected value of that function, and then I could get an expected value. I should tell you what I got for that. That would help also. I got this to be 27 over 4, so when you do it and you want to check, that's going to be the answer you get. So um, if you have any questions about these, just email, and there's a lot of nice information here. I hope, I hope you understand, and I hope I'm starting to make you believe that you need that picture. So, Okay, so we'll talk again one more problem.